Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I see a lot of familiar faces and I see a lot of new faces, which I love. Uh, today, we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be chatting a lot with Lynn Wilson. Uh, Lynn is, a, a, we're, well, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to let that introduction happen in just one second. First of all, um, well, Lynn is with Huerta Gruden, of course, just uh, uh, make sure that we're all in, this, in, the, in, the, in the right uh, uh, event here today on Zoom. Um, but uh, we're going to basically have a conversation where uh, I'm going to be asking Lynn some questions and Lynn is going to have an opportunity to share um, answers as she wishes. Uh, but most importantly, uh, it's going to allow us to learn a lot about Hurtigruten, the brand, the destinations, uh, what they stand for, um, a little bit about the relationship between Luxury Cruise Connections, which is us, and Hurte Gruten. Uh, I'm Carlos Cedri. I'm the CEO of Luxury Cruise Connections. And today, in today's event, we have a lot of Luxury Cruise Connections team members, uh, as well as a lot of existing Luxury Cruise Connections guests, and as well as a lot of Luxury Cruise Connections, uh, I guess, email followers. You guys have probably been, re been receiving our emails for some time. And you might not might not have done business with us yet. And so hopefully this will be an opportunity not to just learn about uh, Hurti Rutin, but also to understand a little bit of what, what we stand for as a company um, and, and, and why our relationship with brand, brands such as Hurti Rutin makes so much sense. Um, during today's event, I also want everybody to notice that uh, this is not your typical webinar, right? Your typical webinar, you normally don't see people's faces, right? You just see the two presenters and that's it. But the reason why we do it this way is because we like the opportunity for interaction, right? We we like the opportunity to, um, um, you know, to chat with you guys, to get to know you guys as well. But most importantly, that you feel very friendly and open to um, ask questions, right? And so we have two ways where how you're going to ask questions. One is... We have a chat box at the bottom of your screen. I'm going to type hello so that you see uh, where that is. That's it. Thank you, Denise. And uh, that is uh, where you can type questions that you feel are okay for us to uh, go over at the end. But if you have questions that you feel are relevant, like uh, if, if you have, if, if you, if you want to ask something regarding something that we're talking about that you feel is relevant for you guys to stop us and ask the question live, go ahead and do that as well. Because we really want to make this a conversation. I want you guys, all of you guys, to feel um, at home and, and comfortable and understanding that while, yes, I'm kind of guiding the questions and Lynn is going to be giving the answers, uh, this is also for all of you guys to ask and interact and learn. And, um, um, and hopefully at the end of the event, We've given you enough information so that you can make an educated decision in terms of, um, you know, whether or not you want to go uh, on an expedition cruise. Where would you want to go to, and 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 hopefully the brand, and ideally Hurti Gruten, if that's the right thing for you. Um, also, within the next couple of minutes, we're going to be pushing some polls. So we do this so that we understand who is with us in today's event. So for example, the first one that we're gonna launch is this one. Have you ever sailed with Hurti Rutan before? Um, and as you get a chance, please go ahead and um, you know input your answers and we're going to share those results also very soon. Also, you might've noticed that when you joined the event, you learned that the uh, meeting is being recorded and we do this so that we can send you a a recording of today's event to your email um, together with some, you know, follow-up answers to questions that you might have throughout the event. Um, and uh, you can share this with your friends and family. Uh, at the end of today's event, we're also going to share with you guys uh, some of the opportunities that there are to book Kurti Gruten right now, promotions, and also a special little something that we've um, uh, had Kurti Gruten basically give you guys, if you wish, to make a booking with Hurti Gruten soon. Um, and anybody that watches the event is going to be eligible for it. So even if you send the recording to any of your friends and family, they'll be eligible for it as well. Okay, I think I've said the word Hurti Gruten way too many times, so now it's your turn to say it. Uh, sure. And by the way, 
Ninety-seven <laughs> percent of you have never sailed with uh, Ruti Ruten before. Only three percent of you have. Here are the results. You guys are probably seeing a little pop-up in your screen right now. And so, yes, I'm, that's it. I'm done. What about <laughs> Lynn? Go ahead and introduce yourself. And you, now you can uh, say your brand a couple of times. I think I skewed the poll because obviously I work for Hertirut. And so, of course, I have sailed with Hertirut multiple times. Uh, my name is Lynn Wilson or uh, Lynn Lynn, the Norwegian. I am from Norway. So I am originally from Norway or actually I'm a love boat child. My dad was Norwegian. My mom is American. And I have been with her to not and off since 2016. I hired on with a cheeky Sarah Palin tagline. I could see the ships from my house because I grew up right along the Trondheimsfjord. And I did indeed watch all of the ships past my house. In fact, the ship we're going to talk about today, she was built right across the fjord where I grew up. So her Hurtiruten is near and dear to my heart. And uh, I've now been stateside for about 20 years, but super excited to be here to talk about all things Norway, both Northern Lights, Midnight Sun, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to come. Uh, super excited with Luxury Cruise Connections as well, though, because uh, one of my favorite partners, they uh, are so great to work with. They are so attentive. They ask the exact right questions. So please, please, please be reaching out for quotes from your Luxury Cruise Connection advisors. I'm, I'm looking right at you, Sean. I had a great conversation. So, you know, we definitely have a wonderful partnership uh, with Luxury Cruise Connections. And they have uh, birds in their office. And that is the only partner I can think of that has birds. So you, it's we a do. bird sanctuary. Thank we you, do. We do. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Yes, we do. We have the, I think, the largest privately owned uh, uh, Macaw Sanctuary, in, at, at least that we know of. Uh, we've been that we've been told as well uh we do we um yes they're, they're beautiful by the way so if anybody ever wants to come to our office we can give you a private tour of our birds <laughs> but um yeah i mean you've been in our office a couple of times and of course uh, we very much enjoy uh doing business with you guys it's an incredible partnership is one that really allows us to shine because um well i mean you guys do an incredible job i i think that um, our job as travel advisors, I mean, we understand uh, the product very well. We know the product very well. We know the destinations well. Uh, but I think where we stand out and kind of our biggest value uh, as a travel agency is, uh, or as travel advisors is that we like to say that we become experts at our clients. And so, our, you know, we got to understand the product. We're going to know the product very well. We're going to know our clients better. Because that way we can really understand who is the right guest for the right ship. But when we do our job right, and hopefully most of the times we do, uh, we when every time we put our clients on board a, one of your ships, they love it, and they come back raving about it, and they send referrals, and they uh, share our information with more friends, and that's what makes us um, basically gives us the ability to grow the way we're growing, um, and. Um, you know, like you said, I mean, we've been doing business for a long time and we very much enjoy uh, dealing with you as well, Lynn, because I mean, obviously, uh, you're an incredible resource being as knowledgeable as you are. And I'm just saying this because I want everybody to know that when you're dealing with luxury cruise connections, you don't only get access to us as advisors, but you get the resource of Lynn as well. Lynn works very, I mean, I believe yours, you, you handle basically trade, right? That's your side of the, of, of work to or you handle the entire sales, the, uh, uh, I handle trade and uh, all the webinars, but primarily I deal with uh, trade. Yes, Perfect. usually. So that, that means basically basically that your job is to make us look look good, and that means oh, that so like, keep you know, going. <laughs> um, if at any point in time anybody uh, uh, you know feels that there's an opportunity to bring Lynn into a conversation, she she's done that a thousand times before, and she'll continue to do it. I'm sure, um, oh, yeah. because you know obviously it's a partnership, and that's that's how we do things. Absolutely. Um, and so before I get started with my questions, there is one that I want to get out of the way. I mean, we've said your brand name a couple of times already, but there was some news very recently about a, a change in the brand starting December. Is that something? I mean, it's in the, it's in, in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
right? So Herfdyrutten is the the basis upon which was Norway, right? We got our start in 1893, um, and we had our first expedition in 1896. So historically speaking, we've kind of had Herfdyrutten expeditions um, and Herfdyrutten Norway. Uh, but we will be rebranding our sister company. Uh, so I represent Hurtiru in Norway. Our sister brand, Hurtiru Expeditions, will be moving to HX. So HX, Hurtiru and Expeditions. Just so everybody knows, I'm I'm six one. I'm very tall. So people say, well, why are you doing the change? I'm like, ask me how many times I've been asked to pronounce Hurtiru. About as many times as I'm asked how tall I am, right? So uh, <laughs> HX is, you know, it's always been our internal nickname anyways. So we will just encourage everyone to refer to us as HX. But of course, the origin, the sustainable expedition cruising, all of those elements, the the history is not changing. It's only a rebrand of the name. And also, you know, Hurtudet Norway and expeditions provide two distinctly different experiences as well. So we do want to differentiate between the two. So I would not have the Zodiacs going ashore, uh, but rather there is human infrastructure where I go. Whereas HX, uh, I always joke, if you're just sick of people, go on an expedition because we take you to some of the most remote places on this planet. Lots of penguins, lots of polar bears, not a lot of people, right? So that really falls squarely with expeditions. But we uh, have always referred to ourselves internally as HX. So now we are rolling it out and we encourage you guys to call us HX. Good, good. So, and Lynn, you obviously, as we can already tell, uh, you grew up in Norway. Yep. Um, so can you... You know, can you tell us a little bit about Norway? Can we start our conversation by just talking a little bit about it? As of course. Fact, you know, all, all that you've already shared, of course. But. Yeah. So Norway, relatively small country, about five and a half million inhabitants. Uh, what you need to know primarily uh, is that two thirds of the country is mountainous. And I'm telling you this for a reason. So we have this beautiful picturesque mountains. And then we have a record breaking number of fjords. We have 1700 fjords. So why would you visit Norway? You want the fjords, you want the mountains, we have it all in spades. So but I want you to remember 1700 fjords with two thirds of the country being mountainous, uh, because that is the basis upon which that Herpiruten was founded. We also have 50,000 islands and uh we are a monarchy so we have kong Harald, you have kron princess Marta, you have uh crown prince hokun so very small country fun fact they kind of passed us around like a ping pong ball between sweden and denmark back in the day you know oh you want to marry my daughter okay here's your dowry you take norway oh you want my son here take norway back but we've only recently become our own country and our language, another fun fact, very close to Danish. So we said, we want to be our own country, but oh, we don't have a language. Uh, uh, we'll take the Danish. Yes, you write with a D, we will write with a T. So now um, we are our own country, but we have stolen a couple of languages. We have this awesome number of fjords. Uh, awesome country though, uh, and lots of history, lots of Viking history, lots of World War II history. So those are just a few fun facts, but I want you to remember two thirds mountainous, 1700 fjords that will factor in. Awesome. And so uh, obviously, you know, that's that's the origin of your brand, right? Um, but I know that there is a little bit more than just that that sets you apart in Norway. Like if I'm looking to visit Norway, um, what what sets you guys apart from everybody else that, that sails there? With uh, Hurtiruten, um, we are an industry leader in sustainability. So first things first, the fjords, um, and I wasn't sure, were you going to share screens or no, Carlos? We I, I will, I, whenever you want me to. I have uh, I have some imagery. If you want me to pull it up, you just tell me. If yes, not, pull it up, if you don't mind. You, you, want me to, you want me to pull up the um, the the why Hurtiruten slide? The, um, yes, if you want to pull up uh, the Norway slide, let's see what you have. We'll just kind of scroll through. But while you do that, we have been caring for the coast since 1893. So with that many fjords, it is, we all have this beautiful, amazing waterfront property. 
but it's very logistically challenging to get from point A to point B, for example, because we have to either cross a fjord or circumnavigate mountains. So how we came to be in 1893 was that mail would take weeks to get from the southern regions to the northern regions. Packages would take months. So when you're looking at this map right here, um, it was very challenging to connect the southern and the northern regions. So how we came to be, and I'll tell you how we set us apart afterwards, is that we established the fast route. So we were the first seafarers to navigate from Trondheim up to Hammerfest. So what used to take weeks to months, we essentially achieved in a matter of days. And that, my friends, is how Hurtigruten came to be. We are the fast route. We're so literal in Norway. Our name quite literally means the fast route. Hurti is fast. Ruten is route. My maiden name is Uslein. I am named after a gravel road in a small town or a, a gravel road called Uslein. So, you know, we're very literal people in Norway. And that's, I guess, what we figured we would settle on the name. But that route is a lifeline to the Norwegian coast. Even now, 130 years later, we are an absolute pillar in Norway. So that's the first thing that sets us apart, that no one has the legacy that we do. We are the longest running operator along the coast of Norway. We just celebrated 130 years. We have six ships operating this route. Guess what? The fjords haven't gone anywhere. They're still there. So we're still the fastest route in many instances. So that is really the legacy upon which that we stand on. So there's not a nook, a cranny, a fjord that we have not extensively um, uh, perused or uh, explored is the word, I guess. So uh, if you wanted to go to that next slide, the why, um, we are also an industry leader in sustainability. So this is really at the core of who we are. We were the first major adventure travel company across brands to ban um, all non-single-use non plastics. We built the world's first hybrid powered vessel with our Hurtigruten and Expeditions brand. We will have three hybrid ships uh, in our Norway brand by 2024. We are heavily investing in all of the green technology. And you might have read about C0. We do have a goal to build the, the world's, or hopefully the world's first zero emissions vessel by 2030. 80% of our food is sourced locally. So that allows us to provide an amazing culinary experience. And I will say we do not wear tight clothing on culinary cruises. So don't pack, pack clothes that have a little bit of give because the food is really good. Um, and we are really sustainable in the way we are working ships work because we carry the equivalent of 10,000 trucks worth of cargo. So there's a lot of differences that set us apart, but really the legacy, this is the most authentically Norwegian experience. We are extremely well celebrated along the Norwegian coast. I don't know of any other operator that has a museum. We have a Hurtigruten museum with a decommissioned vessel from 1956. Uh, but uh, a trip with us, if you really want to experience Norway like a Norwegian, if you want to taste Norway, the foods that we bring on board, you will definitely be thinking of Hurtigruten. But sustainability, we are also, that it is at the core of who we are, very important for us to operate as sustainably and responsibly um, as we can. And we also try to drive, drive changes in the industry at large as well in Norway. And Lynn, what does is, what is, what is typical Norwegian food look like? Oh, okay. Well, that is a loaded question. So for <laughs> breakfast... We have all of the cold cuts you could think of. We have salami, ham, cheeses, hard boiled eggs, uh, fresh baked bread uh, at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, we have brown block cheese, it's called Brunost. We did invent the cheese slicer, so you're all welcome for that. Of course, we have fish, fish and more fish. We have lots of potatoes. We have a potato picking holiday in, in Norway, uh, lots of meat. So we like to think we invented the meat and potatoes, uh, but we are well known for king crab, for salmon, for cod. 
we have beef jerky here in North America. We have dried fish in Norway. That's our version of beef jerky. Uh, it's also very healthy. It's sustainably sourced. So if any of the fish is on any red listed or red list, then we won't source it. If, uh, you know, the, we have a lady, she hand delivers cloudberries. We have um, collaborations with uh, seaweed providers. We do seaweed salads. We have seaweed salt. Did you know there's 12,000 different types of seaweed? That's a whole different rabbit hole. Um, I could talk about our drinks. We have breweries that brew IPAs only for Hrpiruten. Uh, we have distilleries that make gin and Akivit uh, only for Hrpiruten. We age sparkling wine underwater in fjords for six months at a time. So that's called bubbles of the sea. If you want to do some research or uh, your luxury cruise connection advisor will be able to share those links with you after this webinar. But uh, it's either which way, it's a culinary delight. And we, we pride ourselves on having a regenerative experience. So the culinary element is almost like a secondary element. The, the primary is that we want to inject funding directly into these coastal communities. The return is fresh cuisine. It is every every meal you will have with her food has a story. We have award-winning cheeses. It is this seafood or uh, seaweed that's cured this way. Uh, we have kelp meals, Arctic pearls, sea urchins, and uh, everything we do also really ties in with sustainability as well from uh, how we rethink menus. We'll deconstruct menus. For example, we'll take some from dinner before we think of it and then we reuse it. We've minimized food waste by about 70%. So if you are a foodie, then this is absolutely something that you really want to look a little deeper into because it is the traditional Norwegian cuisine. So we're not just going to serve you frozen burgers. It's really just it is, we can pick up king crab in a port, we can serve it that night. Makes sense. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. And so, and when and when would be the best time to visit Norway? Any time is a good time to go to Norway. It does depend on what you want to see. So each uh, season does have its own distinct personality. Uh, if you wanted to explore the midnight sun, for example, you would want to go, uh, if you go to Svalbard, anywhere between uh, April and August, the sun does not set. But generally speaking, June and July is a great time to go. If you're an insomniac, come on over. You know, the sun won't set. You will be fine. Just hang out on deck. We hug the coast the whole way. Explore the coastline at three o'clock in the morning. If you want northern lights, which is... This background, um, and here's your first piece of homework. Everybody here needs to look up the solar maximum by end of business today. Uh, Northern light season is currently upon us, and Nor Norway is a really great place to see them. So the best, if you wanted northern lights and you want fall foliage, you would go now. You would go September, October. If you want to go dog sledding, maybe you want to go cross-country skiing. If you want to go snowmobiling, go to igloo hotels, snow hotels. See the northern lights in the polar night when the sun does not rise. You'll go November to January. Let's say you want a winter wonderland, but you also want northern lights, then you're going to want to go, I'm sorry, if you want northern lights, winter wonderland, and increasing daylight hours, you'll go in February or March. And if you want to sail from one season into the next, April, go and sail from the beginnings of spring in the south into the, the last grasp of winter in the north. Um, and then... Uh, one final month, which if we have anybody here of Norwegian descent, uh, you would might want to go around May 17th. That is our Constitution Day. And uh, that is a huge to-do. So you'll see all the Norwegian parades and traditional Norwegian garb all up and down the country. We have celebrations on our ships. Uh, but there really is no bad time to go. And it's not a one and done, just like you can go back to Galapagos in rainy and dry season. You can go back in summer and winter and experience, have two completely different experiences in Norway. So, and we're going to talk more, more a little bit about the uh, Northern lights and, 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 mm -hmm. and, you know, that magical time to, um, or that magical thing that we all want to see, uh, and very popular, but I want to spend two, two seconds talking about um, this midnight sun 
thing. I, I have a, a slide here that I want to share because it's a thing. I mean, there's people that, that you know, they want to get this off their bucket list and just be able to see this at least once. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, it's, let me just pull this up real quick. It's, I think it's insane. Check this out. So you're basically, and it's one of the very few parts of the world that you can actually visit and actually the, the sun never, never sets. Yep. And it's anywhere above the Arctic Circle. You are officially in midnight sun territory. So the length of time will vary depending on how far north you are. Like I mentioned, Svalbard, April 22nd, the sun will not set until August. So they need to be on a 24 hour schedule because how else will they know? Is it midnight or is it noon? We don't know. So, but even that's something else you should track, even if we're below the Arctic Circle in the summer, the sun might set but it might set for like an hour. Like let's say, so I was in Hogesund uh, in Southern Norway not too long ago and we were up, um, you know, it was late. I think the sun set at like midnight and then it came right back up at one o'clock in the morning. So we do, regardless of where you are in Norway, you still have 24 hour daylight. Um, and right. my grandparents used to come over and uh, they would be like, what's going on here? I'm like, you know, we got blackout curtains. It's fine. All of our ships have blackout curtains. So you will be able to sleep, not to worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. And so now let's talk a little bit more about the Northern Lights. I mean, that is definitely a very popular bucket list, uh, you know, thing to do, uh, uh, you know, for, for many world travelers. Um, so let's, let's, let's talk a little bit more about it. Why should guests uh, opt for a cruise uh, in, instead of an overland experience to go see the Northern Lights. If you could pull up that screen uh, yeah. with the Aurora Oval, because I'm in sales, you don't want me gaslighting you, so you can feel free to fact check me. Um, so we have something called an Aurora Oval. Here's your second part of your homework for the day. I want you to look up the Aurora Oval and I want you to look up the Northern Lights forecast. If you want to go to the next slide there, Carlos. Yeah. Um, that is the Aurora Oval. So something you need to know, the Northern Lights occur year round, right? So, but we can't see them because of midnight sun. So all we're waiting for is the sun to set. So anytime between September, March, all perfect for Northern Lights. Um, but why do I think you should see this by means of a cruise? I will tell you. So let's say you are in a city, you actually have light pollution. So the lights will not be as crisp or as clear as you will from a ship, right? Another reason, let's say you go to Iceland, you can see that they fall squarely in that Aurora Oval. But you know, when the Northern Lights occur, it does tend to get a little cold. So if you are on land, you will be outside, perhaps freezing, and you have to wait for hours on end. You know, that can make you grumpy. With me, we're gonna send you to bed, go to bed. We will wake you up if there are Northern Light sightings. So you will get your beauty sleep, there's no light pollution. And what is the third element that you need to see Northern Lights? You need a clear sky. Again, if you are landlocked, you might not have the ability to move anywhere. Our ships are floating observatories. We have the ability to sail past cloud cover. And a lot of our um, ports are up right underneath the Aurora Oval. And we even have something, I don't know if you want to just go to the next slide, Carlos, but if uh, what I've told you it does not resonate, we are so confident that the Northern Lights will occur that you are eligible to get a free cruise if they don't. So anytime between now and March, uh, if you're sailing with us in Norway, 11 days or longer, if there are no Northern Lights occurrences, you get a free cruise. Listen, we're a business. We're not really in the business of giving away free cruises. So we're pretty sure the Northern Lights will come out to play. We know this is a bucket list trip for you. So this should put your mind at ease with the Northern Lights and the fact that we will, you need to keep your intercom on. So I'm going to spell out the fine print here. So if there are no occurrences, not if you don't see them, we do expect you to get out of bed at three o'clock in the morning. Our Facebook page, all I've seen is Captain woke me up at 1.30. Captain woke me up at 3.30. You want that. We all look a hot mess out on deck at three o'clock in the morning. I feel like there's some friendships being formed out there. You know, pack some interesting pajamas, chase the lights at two o'clock in the morning. But if they don't occur, you do get the opportunity to go back with us for free. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've known, I've, I've heard of a lot of people that have 
made the trip to Iceland and unfortunately they just don't get to see them and they come back and you know how many times do you get to actually travel to Iceland and 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 so you know at at, at least uh, this really gives you the assurance that like if you're traveling to see the northern lights and this is the way to go for sure especially because of that guarantee yeah, yeah. um so okay so uh, is there is there any anything else you want to share with us before we go into the offers that we want to talk to our you know to our guests about today um no just uh, when you are talking to your luxury cruise connection advisor just note that we can't readily tell you when the best time to go to see the northern lights is and i think i touched on this earlier that you please let them know what else you want to experience do you want winter do you want dog sledding do you want increasing daylight hours do you want christmas markets um you know come with a secondary factor because northern lights you need to know that they're prevalent at any time throughout uh september and march but uh your homework is the solar maximum so i want you to look it up we are anticipating higher than normal activity between 24, 25. So we've already seen that the Northern Lights have come out with a bang. Uh, so Aurora Oval, Northern Lights forecast, solar maximum. And you're welcome. I will also make sure that you have links that we have to the dedicated content here. And so, yeah. Yeah, and, and obviously I wanna get everybody a little bit excited about some of the itineraries. Yeah. Uh, so for that, um, can you guys see my screen right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's let's share some of this. Can you just kind of walk us through some of this itinerary so that? Yeah. So we do have a Northern Lights chase and a, and a Midnight Sun chase. So I also want you to think back on our origins. So our ships have traditionally speaking been working ships, right? Uh, a little bit wonky of a cell, you know, we're frequently in and out of ports. But in conjunction with our 130th anniversary, which we celebrated in July this year, we did launch two premium packaged itineraries, one of which is the North Cape Express that you're looking at here. So you can see just from the map alone, we cover the vast majority of the Norwegian coastline. I think we've already established that nobody knows the coastline like we do. It is a more inclusive uh, itinerary than what you might be uh, accustomed to with our other products. We have longer port stays, so this should be intuitive to anyone in North America who might be used to river cruising or traditional ocean cruising, uh, but we do it, we still have the essence of Hurtiruten. So we have a five person coastal experience team on board. They will be there to host lectures for you. That is how we entertain you, by the way. So in case you were wondering about the intro with the trivia night is because we have so many lectures. Uh, so you learn a lot with us. Uh, heavy focus on culinary. You will really taste the coast of Norway. It truly is a fjord to fork experience when you sail uh, on the North Cape Express or the Svalbard Express, which is the summer counterpart. Um, and you'll tell the story of her period. So you're going to learn about how we were affected in World War II, for example. There's, you know, we were heavily bombed. Um, you'll learn about Viking history and you'll learn about Sami culture. Uh, so that is, in a nutshell, this is perfect for someone who really wants to, who's interested in, in what we have to say and what we have to bring to the table in terms of really showcasing the DNA of Norway. So North Cape Express predominantly will have a Northern Lights focus. There are April departures, however, so you do need to track on the daylight hours because we need darkness. That's one of the key ingredients for Northern Lights. So as we get further into April, we are are moving into midnight sun territory or close to 24 hour daylight and once the sun doesn't set anymore we can no longer see the lights yeah so uh and these are some of the ports that yes. we're going to be visiting on that itinerary i'm just going to kind of skim through them Yes, so that's mm -hmm. village life. You have Alta, which is the capital of Northern Lights. Olesund that you're looking at is Art Nouveau. There, you, there's a whole architectural story that will be told. So there was a heavy fire in 1904 here. And when they rebuilt, they opted for Art Nouveau style. There's another city you'll go to called Molde. They have much sleeker lines and uh, they rebuilt in a different way because they were so they were bombed to smithereens during World War II. 
Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have the slide for that one. But Trumse, that's the gateway of the Arctic. We'll go into the Hardanger fjord. It's world's uh, fifth longest fjord. Alta is right underneath that Aurora Oval there. So you see there, that's a Northern Lights Cathedral. This is also home to the northernmost dog sledding race in the world. Um, and it's uh, known to be an exceptionally great place to see the Northern Lights. The weather always seems to be conducive. So we have taken, our, our itinerary planners have handpicked these ports to give you the story of Norway, as well as the story of Herfiruten. Um, and then if you wanted to go down to the Lofoten archipelago, because I know anyone who is coming, who's tuning in here, uh, is probably, if you're thinking about Norway, you are definitely, you have definitely seen the Lofoten archipelago. That's one of the most scenic areas uh, in the country. So, of course, all of our Hurtgeru Norway offerings will have Lofoten archipelago. And then just north of there, there's a Vestidolen archipelago, which is our birthplace. That's where we have the Hurtgeru Museum as well. So no shortage of fjords, mountains, scenic areas, village life, cities. Uh, you're going to learn everything there is to know about Norway. And uh, I know that for those that uh, are participating to this event that are getting excited about something like this, there's a special offer that we can share with them, correct? On some correct. Activity? Yes. So Luxury Cruise Connections is one of our most treasured partnerships. So whenever we have uh, a special little deal to sprinkle in, we always make sure to extend that. So for any new bookings uh, between now and October 15th, if you see a price on our consumer website for any departure between now and April 30th for Norway, um, Luxury Cruise Connections will quote you a lower fare because they have access to an additional 10% discount. Uh, and they always have shipboard credit with us as well as there is another uh, webinar shipboard credit. So if you were to book by October 15th, for example, you will not only get a better deal, you will have copious uh, amounts of shipboard credit added, which you can apply towards all of your onboard purchases. But there is cur currently a special price that can only be unlocked if you book with Luxury Cruise Connections. So just to be super clear, if they were to call Hurtiruden directly, they wouldn't get that price? They would not get the price. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> can we... So I just, I just want to kind of take a second to... Um, express this kind of, you know, the, the, the reason behind this uh, to our audience. Um, you know, Hurti Ruten and us have an incredible relationship, just like we were sharing before. Um, and they're relying heavily on us and companies like us to bring in the right client to sell on board your ships. Um, we are, our team is not only capable, uh, but also uh, extremely knowledgeable about the product and the different destinations. And, and that's why this happens, this relationship uh, uh, becomes even stronger with opportunities such as this, because, you know, you guys, uh, some of you guys are our existing guests. Like I said, some of you guys might not have ever done business with us, but then this is an opportunity for you to uh, both give us a try and as well as give uh, Hurti Rutin a try and, and, and go on one of these amazing trips. Lynn, uh, do we want to talk about this Valorant Express um, as well? Yeah, if you want uh, to, for me to continue to threaten you with a good time, I shall accept. So we have, so the North Cape Express, just to clarify, is predominantly a Northern Lights cruise. The Troll Fjord that runs the North Cape Express, she flips to the Svalbard Express in May. And I love this story. Again, I hope that if you take away one thing from this event, it's that with her you will learn and there is storytelling all throughout. So there's a reason we have this itinerary launched between 1968 and 1982, we actually had a government contracted route. It was called the Sportsman Route, and it connected Norway to the high Arctic. Um, so when we celebrated the 130th anniversary, we're very proud of the achievements that we have made. So we have revamped the old Sportsman Route. But similar to the North Cape Express, again, we have a much heavier focus on culinary experience. We do have a robust coastal experience team with lecture programs, longer port stays, again, average six to seven hours, but some really cool ports. So if you're looking at the map, there's a, you can see Jürgenfjord and you see Urke, U-R-K-E. 
That is a village with 40 people. Uh, then you have Trana, right on the Arctic Circle. That is a wonky archipelago. It sits 30 nautical miles, 33 nautical miles offshore. It is one of the oldest fishing villages in Norway, archaeological finds dating back 9,000 years. And they live in such extreme remote conditions. There, you know, fewer than 500 people live here. So we handpick these ports. So whenever you also sail on these premium package voyages with her Piruten, it's important to note that we're not going to take you to all of the tourist traps because that wouldn't really be the Norwegian way. So, um, and then we, of course, go to Holdningsvog, North Cape. But what's really cool about this itinerary, and if you have not been to Svalbard, it is a must visit. So if you were tuning in earlier, we were cracking jokes about Svalbard. Uh, but if you're tuning in now, there's 2,500 people in Longyearbyen, which is the first dot you see in the Svalbard archipelago. Once you get to New Olesund, we're talking 30 to 300 people. So uh, it's the northernmost post office in the world. This is where the global seed vault is. There are more polar bears than people in the Svalbard archipelago. Uh, you cannot leave the settlement of Longyearby without a rifle because you need to protect yourself. Of course, polar bears extremely protected. We do not chase them. It's illegal to seek them out in their natural habitat. But this is really a true taste of the high arctic as well but not having to take on an expedition which would this is primarily an expedition destination and by that i mean no human infrastructure so you have to zodiac ashore so what we have done we found the two piers that do exist in svalbard so when you sail with us on the svalbard express you will physically be walking off the ship Another thing is that this is a great itinerary for birders and folks who like World War II history and folks who like architecture. Uh, but the birders, you'll uh, encounter puffins, skuas, gannets, Arctic terns coming all the way from Antarctica, all the way up to Svalbard. Uh, and it's truly a, a pretty solid affair to tie together mainland Norway with the high Arctic, which by the way, will bring you within 800 miles of the geographic North Pole. So it doesn't get much further North than that. This is the northernmost, this is the largest town and the northernmost town in the world. Amazing. Yeah. And some of the uh, destinations that we would see. Tadada, that's that archipelago. If you want to put Longyearbyen too, like 2,500 people and just like the sun does not set here between April and August, it does not rise between uh, November all the way through January. So, but it's not pitch black. You have a beautiful nautical kind of a blue light, but they really live kind of in extreme conditions here, heavily dependent on tourism, but they're some of the happiest people. For people who live in darkness for months out of the year, it is astounding to me how happy they are. And with our expeditions brand, a lot of our expedition team members, when they're not on charter, they live in Longyearbyen. So that's where they that's where they all hail from. And there's dog sledding, ice caving. Uh, one of my colleagues had a hen party in an ice cave. So there's just so many cool, wonky, interesting things to do. And it's so diverse. You can actually go here on like a foodie tour. There's Thai restaurants here. They have amazing culinary programs. They have... Um, Camp Barrett's Nights, where you can have uh, dinner around a fireplace. You can hang out with Svalbard reindeer, lots of dog sledding opportunities. It is just the wonderfully wonky place that you just have to visit. Wow. And East Fjord. Yes, we have fjords all up and down um, uh, Svalbard, too. There's glaciers up there. Uh, and it's funny that depending on the time of year you go, you will encounter sea ice. But it's important to note that both Norway and the west coast of Svalbard is warmed by the jet stream. So you don't have as much sea ice, but once you get to the northern regions, like the New Olesund, you will have productive glaciers calving ice into uh, fjords as you approach that research town of New Olesund. And and I'll tell you the name of the glacier that you can see if you do a half voyage and you extend the long area. And it's called Nordenscholzbren. So say that five times fast. But this is the epitome of the high Arctic. And you definitely get a taste of what kind of wilderness looks like. It's really fun. Amazing. Yeah. I won't even attempt to say that name. <laughs> Nordenscholzbren. What did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Now, I think, I think we've... Um... 
entice our audience quite a bit on the destination, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about the life on board. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, so what you're so looking before, at, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Before we go into, into talking about the ship and the, and, and, and the life on board, I want to just two seconds talking about who is the right guest for who to group, Norway particularly. Let me start a little differently. Who's not the guest would be someone who wants late night discotheques or casinos. If that is what you want, you will hate me. So please don't book me. Uh, what I think if, if we have river clients tuning in, if you like a good river cruise, a quiet, tranquil experience, uh, this could be a good fit for you. If you are a seeker of knowledge, uh, this would be a really good fit for you. If you are a foodie, this will be a good fit for you, but a day in the life on board, or here's the uh, observation, uh, I'm sorry, not observation deck, this is our panorama lounge, but I want you to look at these pictures and I want you to consider this to be your home away from home. So this trip is for someone who is okay with being comfortable and is okay with an informal setting, but it's still in a premium setting as well, but it's very educational. That's really, truly the essence of an experience with us. It is an immersive experience. We don't care what you wear. There's no dress code on board. Um, but we really want you to explore Norway like a Norwegian. So really, honestly, if you enjoy learning, if you enjoy trivia nights, if you uh, like backgammon, if you like canasta, it's really one of those quiet affairs. We have arts and crafts classes on board. We're going to have movie nights. We will have food tastings, cooking demonstrations. So when you are looking at this product, I really would love for you to consider your stateroom as your bedroom. That two-story panorama lounge that is in the top left-hand corner, I want you to consider that your living room. The multiple restaurants with all day dining, those are your kitchens. So it really is an informal laid back affair. And in my personal opinion, immersion is the new luxury. It's there's a need to learn. There's a need to explore. We've all had a tough couple of years uh, and, you know, we do it in a relaxed setting. So comfort is just evident all throughout and experience with us. So really, if you're just a laid back personality, you're really uh, keen to learn, you're keen to try new things and have that authentic experience, then I think that could be a good fit. I will also speak to the age demographic. Uh, our trips are longer. So the age does trend a bit north of 50, generally speaking. So if we're looking for the demographic. Okay. And and what let, let's talk a little bit about what's included in a typical trip. Yes. So with the Hurtiruten uh, North Cape Express and the Svalbard Express, the price you see, the price Luxury Cruise Connections will quote you, that is inclusive of all port charges, taxes and fees. All day dining in two restaurants. Uh, and again, we do draw inspiration from the Norwegian coast. If you book a suite, you have all day dining in three restaurants. So uh, you do have your choice of culinary uh, event of the day. We have a robust lecture program on board. So all of that is included. Arts and crafts classes on board. They had something they were painting at the North Cape not too long ago. So that would have been included. Uh, movie nights and music entertainment. Gratuities are not expected in uh, anywhere with her period. It's not the Norwegian way to tip. So uh, it is relatively inclusive on board. You do get the house beer, house wine, select spirits, Nordic cocktails. There are some that carry an additional charge, but it is relatively uh, inclusive in that regard. What I would say is extra is any off ship activities. So excursions do carry an optional charge, but that is why you book with Luxury Cruise Connections. That is why you get the shipboard credit because you can apply your credit towards any onboard purchases. Uh, and also I want to just remind you that a lot of the ports we call upon are coastal communities. That means that they are walkable. You are walking distance to city centers. So with these new premium packaged itineraries, uh, you have the ability to explore independently. You don't have to stay with us because you have time. And the last thing I will say is that most of our packages, as, as long as you're booking further out than 90 days, 
generally speaking, include pre-nights, so hotel accommodations, some have city tours, so it will depend on which itinerary that you book. But you're coming overseas, it's an overnight flight to get to Norway to begin with, so you're going to extend an extra day. So we're taking the hotel fee out of the equation, the transfers would be included. So uh, it is a more inclusive affair with some pre, some post hotels, depending on what you book, and the onboard experience is quite inclusive question that a lot of people ask nowadays is connectivity, Wi-Fi? Oh, the ship has Starlink, so, and Wi-Fi is indeed included. Would I say that you should be streaming your Netflix shows? Probably not. You probably could get away with it, but I don't, I think it would be frowned upon, but you can absolutely check your social media, your emails, uh, and you can absolutely stay connected. And I hope you do post, I hope you book, you post, and I hope you tag us. <laughs> because that would be fantastic. Then you'd be threatening well. me with a good time. <laughs> and and okay, so basically all all that someone would have to take care of is flights mm -hmm. and then um excursions, which mm -hmm. again can be purchased with the onboard credit that we would Correct. accept. Yeah. Um on 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 basically any booking. Mm -hmm. Um all right, awesome. Now I want to talk about the ship itself, the suites, the accommodations. I have a couple of pictures here that I want to mm -hmm. show. Um Talk to us about this. So the Trollfjord was built in Fosenberg, um, early 2000s, right across the fjord where I grew up. But she went in for full refurbishment in 20, I'm sorry, in June of this year. So when you are selecting your suites, and again, I really think you should look at this as your bedroom because you probably won't spend an exorbitant amount of time in your suite or bedroom because the ship is built for your comfort. But you can choose between suites that have private balconies, uh, bay windows and if you're booking in a if you're not booking in a suite we have a wide variety of arctic superior staterooms ocean views we even have interior uh so again it's i really don't have much of a preference in terms of uh which stateroom you book but i will say suites are more inclusive so when you have the accommodation here that you just pulled up so your choice of cabin category and cabin number of course, but you'll see that the suites do have additional inclusion. So you get a clothing package in uh, with the suite concept. So we actually have her and branded clothing, which we like. So uh, and you do have access to more restaurants. If you want to go to the next slide, we'll have the a full day, all day dining in Flora, which draws its inspiration from our edible herbs and berries. Brasserie Arran, that is our Nordic steakhouse, and this is how we pay homage to the Sami culture and everything that they have contributed. Um, and then you have unlimited selected drinks in Flora and Brasserie Arran, as well as our 1893 bar. Uh, the food tastings, I'm really excited about the food tastings and, and culinary cooking demonstrations because you really do get that fjord to fork experience. Uh, but you'll see again that the sweet, um, uh, the sweet range do, does have more inclusions uh, and you do get the um, the afternoon tea, the rust, you get the culinary demonstrations and you do get some exclusivity with that. And then in terms of the life on board, uh, which is the next slide would be, you know, just your your robust lectures uh, pertaining to flora and fauna, World War II history, midnight sun, northern lights. Norse mythology. Uh, so that would be the daily theme lectures. There is photography guidance on board, which is important. How do you photograph the Northern Lights? How do you photograph bird life, the landscape photography? So if you're a budding photographer, there is support there. And then again, you'll have the movie nights and the music entertainment. And you get to sail with Bjorn, who that's the guy in the picture. He's from Trondheim and he's been with us for at least 10 years. <laughs> so. Amazing. Uh, before we go on um i have another poll question that i want to launch sure. um as we as we just kind of started learning about all these amazing things uh, regarding norway i want to know have you had an opportunity to travel to norway um if you have whether it is land or on board a cruise uh, i want to know and uh so far about 65% of you have not and 7% of you have not. Um, interesting. Okay. Okay. So hopefully we're definitely enticing many of you guys to make that trip. Um, I also want to know, and um, as we, because our, our, our next um, conversation is about 
um, what is currently being offered by uh, so basically, let me just share these results real quick. Can you guys hopefully see that? Again, skewed because I'm part of the 33%. So I expect all of you guys <laughs> to see my country. It's so beautiful, guys. You have to come see it. Awesome. Um, okay, so if anybody is interested in booking a cruise right now, uh, what are the current offers? Like what 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 do we have out there to get people excited about making a booking? Well, right now we do have an impressive offer. So we have 40% off select departures. So if you were to go on the North Cape Express, the Northern Lights, if you want to hunt the lights, 40% uh, off and up to $500 shipboard credit per cabin. That is independent of your luxury cruise connections, member benefit that is independent of the webinar benefit. If you book with Luxury Cruise Connections, that will be a 50% off, right? Um, other departures are up to 30%. So if you're looking at the Svalbard Express round trip, you can get up to 30% off and $1,000 shipboard credit uh, per cabin. So the right now, Luxury Cruise Connections does have the competitive advantage of uh, on the North Cape Express voyages, as well as our classic voyages, which is the travel like a local original route. Anything departing between now and April 30th, if you are planning on chasing those lights, you should be calling Luxury Cruise Connections because you will get that extra percentage off. Um, if there are solo travelers tuning in, I always make it a point to call this out because this is true for both expeditions and for her to Norway. It is against our religion for, to punish someone for having the audacity to travel without a partner. That said, we are a business. So when we go out with new seasons, there is a single supplement. But once we are six to eight months prior to departure, we pull capacity reports. If we find that we have any sailings where we feel we can launch five to 10 cabins with no single supplement, uh, we do so. So right now for expeditions, we have well over 100 departures, lots of Antarctica, lots of other places uh, with no supplement. And it's combinable with other offers. For Norway, we have rates at least through February for Classic and I think through March or April with our um, North Cape Express voyages. So what you need to do, if we have solo travelers tuning in, I need you to reach out to Luxury Cruise Connections yesterday. I need you to let them know your name, your preferred destination, what is your budget, when do you want to go, let them do the work. So every month we give trade a full list of departures. They will reach out. They will quote you. You will get the shipboard uh, credit benefits. You don't have to hunt for the deals because they will do it for you. And if we have any multi-generational people uh, tuning in today, we do also have a, an evergreen child discount up to 50% off. We don't get a ton of children, but the offer is there in case you want it. So we do have several stateroom options that can accommodate triples and quads. So the evergreen would be Northern Lights Promise. That's the free cruise, solo traveler offer. Every month we have a new list and children travel up to 50% off. The first offer that does expire October 15th. So, but if you're booking anything further out than 90 days, you have a week to think about it. So just have your advisor hold something, hold space for you, get your all in price, do your reconnaissance. It's no pressure. We want to make sure it's the right fit for you, but you are going to want to lock in an option booking by October 15th. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, that brings me to my Next question via poll. Um, I want to know, have you ever done business with luxury cruise connections? So that's a question that is pulling out right now in your screen. Have you ever done business with luxury cruise connections? Uh, thank you very much for those loyal guests that are participating in today's event. We got 28% of you have done business with us before and 72% of you have not so far from the uh, responses that we've gotten so far. So I very much appreciate those that um, are already doing business with us. And we very much welcome anybody that hasn't done business with us before to, to call us, just like Lynn said, and give us an opportunity to show you uh, what Luxury Cruise Connections is all about. 31% um, of you have done business with us. Um, 
you know, what Luxury Cruise Connection is all about. We are a luxury cruise agency, a, not just because of the product that we sell, but also because of the service we, we provide. You know, we pride ourselves in, um, let, you know, like aside from obviously getting to know our clients and our guests very, very well so that we can recommend the right product for you. We uh, have an infrastructure that we've created literally so that we can enhance the level of service as opposed to any other travel agency. Uh, you know, you have a, a personalized advisor, not just a call center. You're dealing with somebody that is your personal advisor that gets to know you and gets to create a relationship with you and gets to understand what you like, what you don't like. Uh, but also there is a concierge team that works behind the scenes that can that also be in communication with you um, after you make a booking with us uh, to help you plan for those uh, flights or transfers or restaurant reservations or additional hotel accommodations or uh, just anything else um, that normally becomes a little bit of a headache when it comes to planning a trip and we're there to try to make it easier for you. Um, you know, not every agency is set up the way we do, but we realize that our guests uh, like service, uh, like uh, obviously like to uh, get good deals and save money on their travel, of course. And, and when we have that, and that's, you know, kind of why we are, you know, sharing this amazing offer with you guys, right? But at the same time, um, you know, price discounts is only going to get us so far. We're only going to grow, we deliver amazing service. And that's what we stand for. That's what we preach. And that's what we, that's what we do. So um, thank you, uh, all those that are, um, you know, looking forward to give us an opportunity and, 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 and we'll get you assigned to somebody that can become your new luxury cruise advisor. Um, can I um, add to that? Yeah, please. So the passion, I mean, uh, you know, I was watching Sean, you know, Sean, put your Northern Lights backdrop in. I don't like the space one. I like the Northern Lights one. Uh, but also Diego uh, had a solo client. So the last time I'll tell you about one of the previous office visits, um, I found out that we had a Northwest passage with no single supplement and he had a client looking for exactly that we tag teamed it. We, and we, found that we were missing a cabin. I called my revenue management. I booked the cabin. We transferred it over to Luxury Cruise Connections. We made that dream happen. We just chatted with her again. Her nickname with us is Sunshine. Um, and now she's getting ready to, to book Galapagos again. But we really, the passion, the Luxury Cruise Connection passion and the fact that we will literally hop into the office, we'll have an awesome conversation, we collaborate, we'll get the clients on the phone that day, we qualify the, and I'm not always going to be the right fit. I hope I am, but it is totally okay if I'm not. That is the beauty of Luxury Cruise Connections because they are tasked with finding the right fit. Thank you for the Northern Lights backdrop, Sean. I appreciate it. <laughs> but honestly, that is on that's that is the beauty of this partnership. And you have, for example, if you book directly with us, we do have a call center. You won't have the one-on-one -on -one attention that you will have. And trust me, I hear from Luxury Cruise Connections. They are absolute warriors. And if I don't come correct, I'm gonna hear about it. So <laughs> <laughs> they come correct. I come correct. So you really should look into uh, luxury cruise connections because it's 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 quality over quantity, and they will guide you the right way, whether that be with Hertfordton or any of the other premium lines that they partner with. Thank you so much. Thank you for the endorsement, Lynn. I greatly greatly appreciate it. No um, you're gonna get a couple of clients for that. Not just <laughs> stop. <laughs> yes, bring them my way. <laughs> Um, all right, so I have a couple of questions in the chat that I want to go over. Um, Rick was asking uh, for 2023 departures. So obviously there is still some last minute availability for 2023. Yep. Um, um, we operate Norway year round, so we're there anytime. Uh, if you're going the North Cape Express, just keep in mind once we're within 90 days, it does flip to a cruise only uh, just because hotel allotments are released at the 90 day mark. But right. plenty of opportunities to chase the Northern Lights. Uh, so that is what we have for Norway right now. I will throw a shout out to Expeditions. So it's either going to be Norway, Galapagos or Antarctica. Those are the three options with her. Uh, but lots of 23 uh, availability left because we have so many ships operating. So absolutely, if you are keen to do a last minute uh, adventure, um, 
there will be deals for you, particularly now. So if you're looking at North Cape Express, you can get a 50% right. off with luxury so cruise connections. That, that, that extra 10% uh, mm -hmm. uh, promotion for those, for those itineraries. Yeah. Um, and obviously you're going to go see the Northern Lights. And he was asking me about bundled price um, with airfare from Ottawa. Um, you, uh, I mean, Hurtigruden doesn't offer the bundled price uh, uh, option, I guess, off the shelf. But, you know, we can absolutely put that together for you and we can present a bundled package, including uh, including air for this last minute trip mm -hmm. to Norway, Rick. So uh, we, I, I'm, you know, I'm definitely going to have, I'm going to take down your name and have somebody reach out to you proactively and engage with you so that we can get you all spread away on that trip. And uh, Harold Becker is asking, what are your recommendations for a shorter duration um, for a shorter duration cruise, six to eight days in spring time frame, April, May? April, May. So the North Cape Express still goes through April. The shortest there would actually be nine days for the package. So you might want to consider traveling like a local and doing either maybe a Berg and Kirkenes. That's a seven day northbound. Uh, and that's the route where we do have six ships operating. You just need to note that there are frequent port stops because these are, we are still provisioning the northern, uh, the coastal communities, but don't think that it's like some regular ferry. It, for all intensive purposes, it does look and feel like a proper cruise. It's just that you're in port quite frequently. April, but April and May are very different characteristics. So if you're going in April, that's going to be closer to a winter month. That's when you, you're going to see lots of crazy Norwegians at any time because we've just come out of a dark winter. We're like, oh my God, I see the road. I see the sun. What is that? And uh, so, but you can go from spring into winter uh, if you're sailing from Bergen into Hirkenes. And if you go in May, you're almost at the 24 hour daylight mark, but you don't have, if you don't like crowds, then you might want to go in May because it's almost as good as a summer season, but it's not peak season yet. And you can see us on our constitution day, which is a parade all throughout the country, May 17th. There you go. Yeah. So um, Harold, we're going to have, uh, again, somebody assigned to you and reach out to you for some additional information um, so that we can get you uh, all booked for a May to uh, April to May uh, trip. So um, stand by and we'll reach out to you directly. And Molly was asking about solar rates. So Molly, just like Lynn was saying, I think the best time for a solo to look for a deal on Hurtigruden is going to be six months prior. Is that correct, Lynn? Yeah, Lynn six Reed? to eight months, so depending on capacity. And uh, please reach out because both expeditions and Hurtigruden to Norway, we have a plethora of departures and it's consistent. It's every single month. I've been selling Hurtigruden since 2016. We have okay. always had solo traveler offers. I'm on a Zoom call. Okay. And um, are you booking into 2025? Uh, we have rates right now through, oh gosh, April of 2025. So we have not reached summer of 25 yet. So Northern Lights into 25. But if you um, are looking 25, 26, I would expect to have that in the new year. Okay. Okay. And uh, Rick is asking available dates for North Cape Express in February and March of 2024. Um, yes, absolutely. We will send that over to your luxury cruise connections advisor. Um, we will, since these are longer departures and there's only one ship, you're going to have about two departures every month. So um, your capable team does have all the departure dates handy. And I have loads of the inspirational links as well. So I'll make sure that the team gets that and then they can um, send that out. Loads of educational content, even before you get on ship. The learning starts today, people. There you go. So uh, Re Rebecca, Rick, um, not quite sure if you already have somebody assigned to you within our agency. Uh, but if you don't, then again, know that we will proactively reach out to you very soon um, and, and look into some options for you. Rebecca, if you're looking to go into Q1 of 25, we can do that right now. If um, you want to do summer of 25, what's that? She's been working with Roger. Rebecca has been working with Roger? Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that. So Roger is going to be reaching out to you uh, very soon and get you uh, squared up for that. And uh, Rick uh, Bayer, uh, Denise, can you tell her Rick has been uh, assigned to somebody already? Yes, actually, uh, he's been working with Max Espana. 
Okay, fantastic. Max, you're both both of you guys are in great hands. Um, and um, Max is also going to reach out to you then to uh, show so, show you some available dates for North Cape uh, Express. And uh, Ron it was asking about June, July 2024 options. I'm interested in both Svalbard Express and Iceland cruises back to back. Do you have some options? Describe your expedition ships of suites with Balkanese passenger ship plan. Um, so we talked about Norway. Uh, uh -huh. We didn't talk about um, Iceland um, with HX or with the Green Expeditions. We have some I have both, all of the above. Ron, we're best friends. We're staying together. <laughs> so you can absolutely do a Svalbard Express. You can do northbound, debark in Longyearbyen. You could do a round trip, come back to Bidegan. We don't have a back to back that's going to take you by means of a ship from Bidegan to Reykjavik, but you can just hop on a quick little puddle jumper there and then. You can go on an expedition. So Iceland is handled by our expedition fleet on one of the world's first hybrid powered vessels. And this is where you really get to connect with your inner explorer. And um, for the hybrid powered vessels, these are much newer ships. So the Fritjof Nansen was built in, gosh, when did she come? 2020 or 2021? 50% of the staterooms do have private balconies. We have the world's first full on science center on our expedition ships. So that means microscopes, bone clones, you'll have the opportunity to participate in a science boat activity where you get to go out with our science coordinator and you will conduct citizen science. So I hope you're not thinking about just relaxing. We are putting you to work to conduct citizen science. So you're <laughs> gonna learn all about phytoplankton. You are going to work with happy whale to track the migratory patterns of whales. We're gonna task you to help us out with eBird where we're gonna catalog birds. I was tasked in the Aleutian Islands to find the McKay's bunting, well, like it was endemic to one of the islands. So a lot more of an expeditionary uh, uh, experience and we have Iceland circumnavigations. We also have Iceland Greenland. And then we also have some, let me see, Germany, Norway, Faroe Islands and Iceland. So there are so many different ways that you can explore. And we are in Iceland between May and June. So you might want to take one of the, oh, we might want to send you to Norway for Norway's Constitution Day. And after you debark, then we're going to pop you on over to Iceland to go explore the land of fire and ice. So I'm assuming you like puffins. <laughs> <clears throat> I see, Ron, I see your, your cameras on. So if you don't mind, I want to spotlight you and ask you to unmute for a second. We'd love to learn about a little bit more about what's intriguing you about this trip. Well, um I was in Norway and did a cruise in July this year from Oslo up to uh, Geringer and uh, flew back out of Bergen. Uh, beautiful country, wonderful people, fabulous trip. I highly encourage it. And that's why I'm back looking to go again next year. Yes. I, the part of Norway we didn't see is Tromsø up north. Yeah. And, and then Svalbard, obviously. So I've been looking at cruises that go from Norway, either fly to Longyear Ben or uh, cruise to Longyear Ben. Uh, there's another cruise line with an expedition ship that does cruises to Svalbard and uh, spend seven days around Svalbard. Uh, and then, then I was trying to connect that trip uh, with a um, cruise around Iceland. And my Iceland cruises, I have two identified one departs Reykjavik on July 13th, and the other one departs on July 20. So I would need to get to Reykjavik at least two or three days before that cruise departs. So I was looking for, again, what the options might be, the uh, Hüttegunden, to go just prior to that, um, Svalbard. Yes. So uh, Svalbard down to Iceland in time for those other that other cruise. I think with us, it, you'd be looking at, we don't have a cruise that will connect Longyearbyen with Iceland, but you can absolutely fly. You would go through Oslo and over to Reykjavik, um, but you can absolutely go by again up to Longyearbyen. And then there's a three-day land package built in with the Svalbard Express. This is where you get to hang out with the Svalbard reindeer. We'll put you on a hybrid electric catamaran. We're going to take you down that fjord called the Billefjord, and we're going to take you to the the glacier that sounds like I'm cursing you out, Nordenschalsbreen. 
and uh, then you can fly on down. But if the high Arctic holds more appeal to you, you can also fly into Longyearbyen. We'll take you to the northernmost post office in the world, and then we will sail you down to Bergen. And then again, it's usually a direct connection to Reykjavik. Um, <clears throat> but I uh, do think you should consider the Fritjof Nansen as well. Um, you know, maybe we'll send you to Greenland or something on the on the way. You'll get we'll cross the Denmark Strait, but. I know our Iceland circumnavigations look to go in um, June, so the dates don't line up, but maybe we'll get you on the Svalbard Express. What I'll tell you, Ron, we will send over all the dates um, with the debarkation and luxury cruise connections can absolutely fill in those blanks for you. Let me, okay. the, let me do something a little bold here and ask Ron real quick, uh, if you don't mind sharing with us, and I'm sure Lynn doesn't mind, yeah. you know, obviously... Uh, I wouldn't do so if I thought she would. Um, what did you have in mind uh, in terms of what 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 have you sell before? What type of cruises do you normally take? What type of brands do you normally sell on? Um, this would you know I, I and I'm doing this uh, publicly on purpose because I think you can give our sure. audience a little bit of of a better understanding of how it com how a, a Hurtigrun expeditions uh, and or Norway compare with other brands. All right, the cruise lines that we like to use, well, the one we used this July was booked through Talc, and it was uh, Panant. And uh, the other cruise line we like to use is Seaborn. And Seaborn, as you know, just launched some expedition ships. They have one of their brand new ships going the route from, uh, gosh, where does it go now? It goes up to, uh, I think you fly to Long Ear Bend, and then it cruises around Long Ear Bend for like seven or eight days. Um and maybe back to Norway. I forget which direction, north or south, but that trip on Seaborn. And again, the Iceland trip I was looking at was another Talc trip with Panant uh, cruising around Iceland. So that's what we've been using. That's what I was about to book literally in the next few days. Uh, and then I saw this opportunity to listen in. And Lynn, I think you're fabulous. You've done an absolutely tremendous job. And Carlos, I need to find uh, somebody at your agency. I've dealt with two people, but not been happy with either one of them. So I'm thinking maybe Sean Riley should be the next person I speak with. Uh, <laughs> Lynn um, prompted him already uh, as an expert. So um, that's where I'm at. I, I'd love to talk to somebody, Sean, specifically uh, in the next, literally the next day or two. Sounds good, Ron. Count on it. We're here for you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, and I'm sure we'll um, we'll find the right uh, the, the right itinerary and the right experience for you. Um, I'm going to get you off the spotlight because I feel horrible now. <laughs> I've kept no, no, no. That was fine. I'm glad to speak. I'm used to it. If you go on the Nansen, just so you know, uh, if you do opt for our, one of our expeditions, I do need you to look up because there are placards in the ceiling that will showcase the size of whales. So you're going to see narwhal, minke whale humpback whale and all the way over at reception you have the blue whale so it is a mind so the details that have gone into our expedition ships it is absolutely wild so um if you get on one of our hybrids i just need you ron to look up <laughs> I promise wonky you request will. Promise I, will. <laughs> I, wanna, yeah. I wanna ask you so so lynn so obviously for ron that has been you know he's used to sailing uh, on luxury ships, right, and doing talk tours or talk, you know, or or cruises with talk and or uh, seaborne, etc. Um, you know, what 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 should he expect in terms of uh, the experience on board your ships versus like? Can, can you give us a little bit of insight on sure. that? Yeah, so we're we are a premium line. We would not afford a full on luxury experience. So we don't have the butlers. We don't have. Um, uh, what is the, so we don't have submersibles like, uh, like Seaborn does. What we do have is again, I have to lean on the legacy. So the polar regions, that is our fight to lose because we've been sailing these polar regions for so long. We do have, I think we're one of maybe two operators that has a full on science center and particularly with our expedition fleet. So when you think of expedition team members, there's so much know-how within our teams and we operate a little differently. You know, usually if you're an expedition team member, you're usually an independent contractor. But with us, a large portion of our teams are full-time employees. 
So that allows us to afford a, a good work-life balance. And it also allows us to afford a consistency with the program that we aim to provide. So it's not just someone that's hopping between operators and, you know, it might feel disjointed or you don't know if the opportunity is going to, or the experience will be the same. We do have a high degree of consistency across the, the fleet. I'm also obsessed with our food. Uh, so I actually have YouTube videos that dedicated only to food. My, my Facebook tag says I mostly post about Fredheim, which is one of the restaurants on um, our expedition ships. Uh, so we do provide an amazing culinary experience, but really you're going to get into science and citizen science. And we have such amazing staff on board. So John Chardin is our chief naturalist and ornithologist. So I didn't even know I was interested in birds until I started going on expeditions. My Zodiac captain in Alaska grew up rehabilitating bears. So we went to Katmai National Park and saw a ton of bears. We have glaciologists, ornithologists, geologists, biologists, so any of the ologists on board. And just to set, you know, on expedition, that, that is common. You know, we're not some unicorn. Uh, so other lines also afford a great onboard experience. But I really think that we set apart with the consistency. And I also think we are an industry leader in sustainability. So it is very important for us to operate as responsibly and sustainably as possible. And you're going to see all kinds of just small actions that really lend to that philosophy. Something as similar, as small as what we call our green stay program. You just hang a tag on your door. We don't clean your stateroom for the day. That's just you saying, okay, you don't have to clean my stateroom. You're saving water. You're saving chemicals, but we make a financial donation on your behalf to a Hurtigruten Foundation. So we have a foundation. Its sole purpose is to fund eco and sustainable projects. So 50 euro cents per night, five kroner per night doesn't sound like a lot. But in 2022, we we had 183,000 green state nights across the fleet. That was 100,000 euros donated to the Hurtigruten Foundation. And we've already supported 5 million kroner across 13 countries, 50 projects. We are building kelp forests in northern Norway. We are uh, funding the Charles Darwin Foundation in Galapagos. So really, we're trying to do our darndest to change the narrative of the game. So Sustainability matters to some, it doesn't matter to others, but it matters to us. And even beach cleanups, we always leave places in better shape than we find them. In the Aleutians, impromptu beach cleanup, we collected 660 pounds of trash, well over 5,000 pounds in 2022. So we're always just doing these small actions that we believe collectively will have a big impact. So if sustainability matters to you, then that would be, maybe, maybe we're a good fit. <laughs> so... Good. Um, thank you. I, no worries. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Ron, we'll be in touch with you very soon, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right. And um, let's see. I don't have any more questions in the chat, but uh, Lori sent me a direct one. Have to go, but please have someone reach out with specifics. Will do. Uh, Lori, I don't think you're still in the event, but we will reach out to you for sure. Um, is there anybody else that would like to participate? Anybody else that would like to say something, share something, share an experience? Um, if you have been on board with the group before, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you want to share anything at all about the destinations that we talked about today, we'd love to hear from you. Um, I want to hear from Patricia. Patricia. Did I did I threaten you with a good time? Yes, I've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good stuff. Oh. Patricia, are you are you excited? Are you um did we did we sell you on the idea of uh, Norway? Oh, I was sold on the idea, but I will contact my um, luxury cruise agent and ask him the questions that I have from this. As sure. far as timing and so forth. For sure. Well, we look forward to that. Thank you. Uh, trust that we uh, will be here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for participating and for being uh, with us today. Um, and listen, I've taken a, I've taken a lot of uh, everybody's time already, and uh, I I'm just very grateful for uh, having had the opportunity to spend all this time and and talk about 
uh, Hurtigruten and Norway and a little bit of expedition, a little bit of Iceland, a little bit of everything. Uh, know that the world of Hurtigruten is quite, quite vast. Um, you know, like Lynn was saying, uh, there is a lot of options uh, within the brand, uh, you know, from Galapagos to, you know, polar expedition to just in a whole bunch of, of, of stuff in between. Uh, but most importantly, I think the most consistent thing throughout any of those options is the consistency that you will find, pardon yeah. the uh, redundancy there, uh, within Hurtigrun. Like like Lynn is saying, this is a brand and an experience that is meant for uh, expeditioners, expeditioners at heart, for people that really want to go a little bit beyond just luxur uh, luxurious uh, uh, um, uh, sheets and, 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 and furniture. Uh, while you'll be very, very comfortable and very, very hampered on board uh, the ships, is definitely it, 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 this. This trips are definitely designed for those that really want to get deep and explore and learn. Um, and and I'm sure this is going to be uh, what I just said, uh, and and what Lynn has been saying uh, is going to be very appealing to many of you guys that have joined uh, today's event. Um, and and Mo as Molly's pointed out just in the in the chat, um, there approach to sustainability is, I'm not going to say unique, but it's second to none. Um, and and um, and everybody talks about sustainability and everybody talks about their efforts and everybody talks about this commitment, but you know, not everybody takes it to the extent that Huti Gruten does. And so if that's important to you, like Lynn is saying, then for sure, this is a, a brand that you're going to be feel very, very comfortable sailing on. Um, and so without any uh, further uh, ado, I want to remind you all that um, if you have any additional questions, um, you can just reply back to the email invitation that you got with what, with whatever questions you have, and we'll be happy to uh, direct them to one of our advisors that can reply them reply to you immediately. You can also email us or email me at carlos at luxurycruiseconnections.com. Um, just like Denise, thank you, Denise, for putting that in the in the chat. You can call us um, at 305-914-1733. Again, you don't have to memorize it or even write it down. We're going to send you an email follow up with all this information so that you can reach out to us at any point in time. Uh, but we will also, like we said, we're very, we like to be very proactive and we're all about relationships. So whether or not you're trying to book something right now, uh, we would love to establish a relationship. We would love to get to know you. We would love to get to understand what we're looking for in the future um, and just become your, your travel friends and help you, um, you know, kind of plan everything out for whenever you're ready. And, um, that's it. That's it for me. Homework. That's not it. Homework. <laughs> Solar maximum, Aurora Oval, Northern Lights forecast. And I will also send loads of inspirational links. And you know what? Bubbles of the sea. Look that up too, because that's just cool. <laughs> can you write, write it down as well? And and uh, Denise, were, uh, can you please uh, send that also together? Uh, ask our marketing team to send that homework also with the email follow-up that we're going to send. You didn't think you were just coming here to just listen. No, no, no. <laughs> no, there's one the more. The learning there. starts now. <laughs> it's Everybody, all good. thank you so much for attending. Thank you. Everyone, as always, always a pleasure. Love these conversations. Uh, and every time, every, every time I have an opportunity to just extract information from your brain, I'm happy to do so. So thank yeah. you so much for joining yeah, We invented the cheese slicer. So you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> every time you have cheese boards... <laughs> Norwegians got you there. So <laughs> there you no, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. And thank all of you guests that uh, uh, have joined us today. All of your luxury, all of you luxury cruise connections advisors that uh, are also joining us today. Thank you for participating and engaging with our guests. And, um, you know, we, we do this event uh, once every two weeks. So stay tuned for more information from us. Also, and stay tuned for a follow-up email on today's event with the recording, with the homework, with the promotions, <laughs> <laughs> and with contact information, of course, so that we can take really good care of you uh, and get you all set for your next trip. Thank all you. Right. You all right. Thank all you. Have a great evening, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you, Lynn. Contact us at luxurycruiseconnections.com.